in my camera bag type of videos have been extremely popular on YouTube, so I thought that I'd give it a go. Let's start with the bags. The very first bag that I purchased was two and a half, three years ago, I believe. What is it called? A Low Pro Pro Runner BP 350AW2, which I tend to use uh, when I shoot macros with my small APS-C sensor ATV. It is a pretty good uh, main compartment. You can reorganize stuff with these dividers. Just the usual stuff. The wheel cut is amazing. The zippers are extremely durable. I'm not sure what these compartments. I have never used them. I mean, you can put keys and stuff in there. But, but this is what comes really handy, especially when you are traveling. You can fit a 15-inch laptop here. I use it in my uh, MacBook Air. You can put your tablet here. Other stuff like. Uh, just bits and pieces of cable. So I'm not gonna go into that, but this is my first bag. I tend to use this one these days quite a bit. It's my main camera, which is on the tripod right now. The 1DX2 only fits in here. If I go shooting birds and wildlife, I usually have the 100 to 400 millimeter attached to it. So this is my main bag these days. It's essentially the same, just bigger as the uh, Pro Runner. It is called the Flip side 400AW2 in the camouflage uh, color, which I really like. As I said, I'm not gonna talk too much about the bags, but this is my go to bag these days. I really love it. Uh, the only thing that's not as good about this bag as the other one, this one has much better padding on the back, and I tend to sweat quite a bit, and this just really uh, helps me. With that, these tend to get soaked much more, so that's one thing to consider when you purchase that. Oh, I got my keys here. So it has a similar uh, layout in this bag as well. You can put uh, actually only your, I don't think, yeah, only your uh, tablet here, so it can't fit a, a laptop, unfortunately. And the third bag that I use is a low pro as well, it's a drone guide 450AW and uh, this is where my Phantom 4 Pro goes. Here you can see that it has a little uh, section in the middle where you can put your drone's body and then you have this charcoal strap and that goes on top of it. Here you put the remote control which I haven't got here and the two uh, batteries go there. Put the, um, what is it, the tablet, my iPad here. Just the propellers, uh, cables, and it also has a little compartment at the top, right here, where I usually put just a, a towel or cleaning gear. That's about the bags, I'm gonna put these back now. Let's talk about the tripods and stabilizers and stuff. So this is my very first tripod, the Manfrotto B3. It's an aluminium tripod, very uh, durable in my opinion. I don't uh, use it in my uh, 1DX2. What is going on here? I went to sleep. So I, I use this only with my APS-C sensor ATD. Uh, has these little latches, so it doesn't have the twist locking uh, mechanism, rather than just opening these little latches and then holding them down. I really love this. I haven't had to maintain it, although I haven't really used it in uh, uh, extreme uh, situations. So this is my uh, travel tripod. This is pretty good. It, I think. These are extremely good for the small uh, mirrorless cameras these days. I should also talk about the uh, main tripod that I've got. My uh, 1DX2 is currently sitting on uh, the tripod. The, uh, uh, I need a bit of uh, help here. It's the Gizzo Mountaineer T3532 uh, uh, Series 3, uh, series three, three sections uh, tripod with the GH332QD uh, ball head. That ball head is uh, absolutely amazing. It has an inbuilt uh, bubble level. Uh, pen uh, control knob and also uh, on the uh, ball head you can control the uh, friction it has a friction control knob um, it has this uh, twist locking uh, mechanism on the legs um, the uh, center column uh, can extend up to almost two meters I think it's, it's crazy uh, tall super stable very light a bit on the larger size in terms of uh, length but it's an awesome tripod the build quality is amazing I think uh, together with the um, really right stuff, it's right up there. So uh, that's the main uh, tripod. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is this Ronan S that I bought six months ago or so. I thought that I would be using this quite a bit, but 
it's actually quite heavy and uh, I haven't even uh, put my 1DX on it. If you use this for uh, hours on end or a few hours a day, then you really gotta be uh, mindful of what it can do to your back. So just make sure that you hold a nice upright position. But it's an awesome gimbal. The build quality is absolutely ridiculous. Unfortunately, it does not uh, support certain features uh, yet. Only has an uh, infrared uh, cable which optically triggers the camera, so for shooting. But it has all sorts of features. I mean, you can check it out online. However, I'm really happy with it. It gives amazing, uh, hyper smooth uh, results. And I can only recommend it, but the weight can be a big con, obviously. Next thing is gonna be my GoPro stuff. I bought a GoPro Hero 5 Black three years ago, and all of a sudden the audio just stopped working. So I took it back to JB Hi-Fi where I purchased my uh, uh, action camera and uh, luckily I couldn't even remember I had an um, extended warranty and it came really handy because in the end they replaced it and I got a new uh, Hero 7 uh, Black with uh, image stabilization, electronic image stabilization. It has this awesome um, hyper smooth uh, feature. I think it's awesome. I'm gonna just uh, throw the Rona S into the bin. I'm just joking. I think the image quality is a little bit better. Uh, about 10 20 percent if you have to quantify it, then the uh, Hero 5 Black. And let's just go through the accessories that I've got. So, this is the uh, GoPro Joe's Flex Clamp. This is pretty cool. I use it uh, whenever I go uh, riding on my bike. You can put it uh, all over your bike, really. It has these adjustable strap inside so you can control the uh, depth of height grips onto the surface. So, it's pretty good. This is just the extension, and this one is pliable, so it's really flexible, you can put it all over the place, twist it, turn it, super durable. This next thing is the Scenelapse uh, 360 time-lapse uh, device. I only bought it because I really like this sound, so I can sleep. This is pretty cool when you're shooting a time-lapse, use this in the city quite a bit, leave your GoPro on it, turn it at a, at a certain angle, you can control the uh, actual angle it's gonna move uh, during a 20-30 minute uh, time-lapse. Shut up. Stop this fucking nonsense. What the fuck is going on? So the second last accessory that I've got is this uh, chesty. It's pretty good for people who are into this kind of harness fetish. So you can chill at Folsom Street. I'm gonna get out of this shit. I'm gonna put this back on. Vomit alert. Back in business. Uh, so this little accessory is pretty handy. It comes really handy when you're trying to shoot behind the scenes uh, footage. A little bit of B-roll. Just gives you a different perspective, different view. So. Quite like it. I used it for a time warp uh, video, which you can check out on my uh, uh, channel. I'll uh, give you the link uh, at the end of the video. This is the very last uh, accessory that I want to talk about. This is the three way grip extension, which has a lot inbuilt tripod down at the bottom. So you can just turn it around and then screw it in and then just place it there and do all sorts of things. You can extend this, tighten. So it's pretty pretty cool. You can actually hold it like this as well. If you need a little bit more reach. This is just a selfie stick essentially. The next uh, thing that I want to talk about briefly is this uh, Joby GorillaPod SLR zoom tripod. This is, I think, I believe this is the smallest. At the time of purchase, I didn't know that this was the smallest. So I thought that I was going to be able to use this with my APS-C ATD, but it's just too uh, heavy for it. So I tend to use it with just setting up loom cubes, so for lining and uh, for the uh, GoPro as well. But it's cool, it has these, everybody knows these little pliable or flexible little legs that you can wrap around all sorts of surfaces, so it gives you a bit of uh, flexibility, literally. So next thing that I'm gonna talk about is my flash. I've got a Canon 600EX2 RT. I think this model was released back in 2016. It has a flash guide number of 197, which essentially uh, means that it's super powerful. Uh, very customizable. It has this sort of wide angle panel and the catch light panel. The other accessories that came with it, the advanced flash diffuser and a couple of uh, gels. You can place it down if you are using it off camera. It comes in this little pouch. The accessory that I've got that I use quite a bit uh, thanks to a friend of mine who suggested this uh, on Facebook 
uh, Ron, thank you for that. Uh, this is the Easy Balance uh, card which you can attach to it. I'll actually show it to you quickly. And just spread this around like that. This little plastic strap. And then you can control the light, turn it any way that you prefer. It's pretty good, especially for macro where you really need to diffuse the light and you don't have much space to work with, you know. I also have a 5 in 1 Ooh! reflector. It has a silver, gold, white, black, whatever. Reflector plus a uh, diffuser, and you get rid of the cover. And the next thing I'm going to talk about are the camera straps. So both of my camera straps are from uh, Peak Design. You can kill a person with it. This is the Summit Edition. Very durable, very comfortable, much more comfortable actually than the uh, slide light. This is what I use for my main camera, the 1DX2. And this is what I use, the light version. This top part is, I don't know, I'm not really sold on it, but still very comfortable. So this is how it goes. It has these little anchor links at the bottom. And then you just attach them, just like that. And then you're ready to go. They come off really easily. I really love these uh, camera straps. Extremely comfortable, very durable. The whole system just uh, works uh, flawlessly. You can change the RAM, put the uh, anchor links uh, on a tripod collar. You can attach it to anything, really. I have an anchor link attached on my big camera to the uh, bottom, so I can just uh, put it to, to my side. It doesn't move whatsoever, so. These camera straps are top-notch. And the other accessory that I've got from uh, Big design is a camera shell, um, a large one. I actually gonna demonstrate what we can do. Just put this in so you, can, you guys can see what it is. Pull this. Gives it awesome protection from the uh, extreme weather. But this one is obviously too big for this camera. I really love the DWR finish on the top of this. Feels good as well. Comes off really easily. You just pull this part here, comes loose. And then you do the same here at the front, and that's it. And then it just slides off. So it's pretty cool stuff. I haven't really used it much, but if you shoot uh, a lot in inclement weather, seaside, a lot of uh, sand, and, uh, and even in the snow in the mountains, this can uh, come really handy, I think, just as an extra uh, protection. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about a little bit is the uh, microphone that I've got. My main uh, microphone is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which is currently sitting on my uh, 1DX2. I really love that uh, uh, microphone. You can customize it. It wasn't uh, too expensive. And the first thing that I did to this microphone was get rid of that uh, windshield that you have. It has a high pass filter. You can control the uh, output gain. You can do all sorts of uh, things uh, just to fine tune your audio, uh, but I really love that uh, microphone. The next thing I'm going to talk briefly about is the constant light source that I use. These are a set of uh, loom cubes, extremely powerful uh, light source, uh, works as a strobe as well. You can see, I mean, it's ridiculous. There's 10 uh, different levels. It has an inbuilt optical trigger, so you can use it in conjunction with the uh, major flash. Hold this down and then switch it off. Just because the light source is so small, it has a major drawback, it keeps out harsh light, so you definitely need a diffusion panel. Uh, waterproof as well, so which I haven't tested yet, but I'd like to eventually. Just briefly about these uh, remote uh, release cables. This is the RS60E3 for my APS-C sensor. Super basic, just native Canon uh, stuff. And the other one is a RS80N3 remote switch, which has a different uh, connection. This is good for long exposures and uh, if you don't have an inbuilt in inter volometer, well actually you, can, you can't even use these because you need a different uh, one, a more upgraded uh, version for that, but this is pretty good for using in uh, bold mode. So that's that. Quickly I'm going to talk about uh, my most important possession, the external uh, storage drives. Uh, both of them are Seagate storage drives. This one is a 1.5 terabyte one, the first one, and this one is a 4 terabyte one. I've got everything backed up three times. One on my laptop, two on these, another drive on my main computer, my desktop. Make sure that you uh, back up everything because you just don't know what's around the corner. 
and this is my poker chip. So this is where I store my uh, photos that I like printed. Go go back, you piece of shit. So when I go to local printing lab or Ted's camera, just take this with me and then get stuff printed. So that's that. This is my MacBook Air, an old uh, model. I think this was released back in 2015. I think so. 128 gigabyte SSD, so I'm very basic. But I use this quite a bit for my Final Cut Pro uh, edits. It struggles quite a bit, especially if you do things like uh, stabilization or 4K footage, you can forget about that because you're gonna just be just pulling your hair out. But I really love this. It weighs nothing, 1.1 kilograms or something. Also has uh, two USB ports, a card port as well. So this is what I'm gonna be taking uh, with me to Hungary. So that's my laptop. Uh, everybody has got one. <laughs> Boring. Next comes the filters. These were uh, two of my first filters. Both of them are Hoya. Uh, this is a circular polarizer, 67 millimeter. And this one is a 3 to 400 uh, ND, a variable ND filter, which gives you control between 1.5 and 9 stops of light, so pretty good. I haven't been using these for quite some time, so if you want them, you can have them for 500 bucks or five dollars. This is the filter holder, my Nisi uh, uh, advanced key filter holder, 100 millimeter, uh, which has a the filter holder, and uh, here we have the enhanced, I'm not going to take anything out, an enhanced circular polarizer, the adapter rings, it has three ND filters, three, six and ten stops, a soft grad uh, three stop and a reverse grad. That's that, I really love these uh, Nisi filters, uh, they have almost zero color cast, super uh, high quality uh, glass, easy to uh, clean. The only thing is that it can be a little bit uh, difficult to put uh, the filters on, it takes uh, a few minutes, but I mean, you get used to it, so I, I really don't uh, mind spending a minute or so putting uh, everything together. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, there are plenty of uh, great reviews online. Also, this is my Phantom 4 Pro uh, drone from DJI. I've had this for two and a half years, I actually managed to crash this once. No, not here. I flew up to 120 meters and the propeller just flew off due to some uh, motor error. Uh, one of the motors just uh, stopped and just spiraled down out of control. My initial reaction was just, you know, running towards it because I, I saw a gazillion of uh, error messages pop up on my screen. I couldn't catch it, obviously. It would have cut my fucking hand off or arm off. It's a bit heavy uh, in terms of image quality, pretty decent. Uh, a little bit soft, uh, even at f8, which would be the uh, optimal uh, aperture for this, I think. I've been shooting all of my aerials with this uh, drone, I absolutely love it. Very reliable, except when it crashes. If I had the money, I would probably upgrade this to, well not upgrade, because I mean, essentially it uses the same sensor, although from Hasselblad, I think. The uh, new uh, DJI Mavic Pro, that one is much smaller, obviously. If the new one comes out, the new Phantom, then I think I'm going to invest into one of those. Uh, last thing that I'm going to talk about are uh, these lenses. Well, actually get this out of the way, this camera. This is a Canon ATD, my first ever uh, DSLR. I got this uh, back in 2017, so just over two years ago actually. And I haven't really used it much ever since I got my main camera, which is the One DX2. I use this mainly or solely for macros. Uh, because of the crop factor, it gives you more detail, you get closer. I love this camera, awesome uh, vlogging camera still. A little flip out screen comes uh, handy when you're uh, shooting yourself with selfies. Uh, and uh, touch screen is actually uh, more configurable and more responsive than on the 1DX2. The 1DX2's uh, uh, touch screen is uh, pretty dumb down in terms of what you can do with it. That's that. Ugh! So let's talk about the big boy a little bit. This is my M1 DX2 that I got about a year and a half ago. I absolutely love this camera. This is my go-to camera. I've been shooting quite a bit of uh, birds in the uh, last uh, several months. I got it completely customized. I have three presets um, just for bird photography. 
I have uh, set up back button focusing and also can switch between the single focus point and the zone AF which covers the entire um, uh, range or a viewfinder. I know it's heavy and it's not for everybody. I love the, the grip of it. It just feels great. It uses a, a massive uh, a battery, the uh, LP E19, which gives crazy amount of uh, shooting time. It's an awesome camera, crazy workhorse. I can't wait to see what the next uh, version is gonna be, if they are going uh, mirrorless or uh, they will be releasing the very last uh, flagship DSLR. It has the 35mm uh, uh, f1.4 uh, prime on it. I absolutely love this lens. Picture quality is tremendous, beautiful bokeh, uh, can shoot amazing b-rolls in low light, so that's awesome. That's the main camera. Now I'm gonna switch back to my 1DX2 and then uh, we finish with the lenses. This is the 18-235mm uh, Nano USM that came uh, with the ATD. This is extremely good for videos, super silent. Uh, they actually developed, I think, a a zoom power zoom adapter or something which can operate really smoothly and uh, silently at 10 different uh, speed levels would have come pretty handy for uh, Peter McKinnon's recent uh, Edgar Wright challenge so that's that one of my favorite lenses is what I use for wildlife and bird photography a super versatile 100 to 400 uh, millimeter um, telephoto zoom lens it has amazing sharpness uh, to it although I tend to sharpen a little bit uh, more uh, most of my images uh, for example of birds, the eyes uh, in Photoshop, uh, so this is an awesome lens, very versatile, great for uh, portraits as well. Let's put this aside and then hop to the uh, next one. This is a 24-205 uh, standard zoom lens f4, I think it's around $1500 now. Pretty handy if you can only take one uh, lens with you, then this is the lens to uh, go to. I'm not going to talk too much about it, it's, it gives uh, great results, great quality. This uh, lens is an ultra wide angle, 16 to 35 millimeter lens f4, it's great for landscapes. Um, it also has image uh, stabilization. I think this is an awesome uh, uh, value for uh, its price. And my last lens that I'm going to talk about is the macro 100 millimeter uh, lens, uh, image stabilized lens. I've been using this for insect uh, photography and abstract uh, macros. This one has image stabilization as well. It has a focus limiter, so full, uh, between zero, uh, 0 0.5 meters to uh, uh, infinity and between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, so it gives you three options. Great image quality, awesome for macros, probably one of the best uh, macro lenses uh, that's available that has autofocus. So, you can't go wrong with this one, I, I believe. I think uh, we should uh, wrap this up. As you can see, most of my stuff is from uh, Canon, but I don't really consider myself a Canon fanboy. I really love that glass though, and uh, the One DX2 is amazing. As long as you find something that suits your style, whichever brand it is, and you can produce amazing results with an efficient uh, workflow, then just pick whatever suits you. So I'm not really promoting anything. This works for me, uh, it might not work for you, uh, just gotta go out, do a bit of research uh, before you purchase anything. So that's it guys, I think I covered everything, uh, all of my gear. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Any feedback is appreciated, I'll get back to you, I promise. Uh, and that's it, I'm out.